Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Keen students of liturgy may have guessed from the decoration of the church and the first hymn that we have just sung, that it is the Harvest Festival. Sadly, uh, the notice sheets you've got do not exactly reflect that. Um, though the readings set there are absolutely correct, they are the readings for this Sunday if we had not decided to keep the Harvest Festival. So when it comes to the readings, please listen attentively to Anthony and to me, and you will know what the sermon is all about. If you don't follow that, it's actually all in that hymn and another one. When you come to a strange church, there are two things you can trust them for in the Harvest Festival that they will sing, come ye thankful people, come, and they will sing, we plough the fields and scatter. And of course, St. John's is fully up to the mark on both of those. So let us enjoy our harvest festival, relax and worship the Lord, praying that the Holy Spirit will be with us in all we do this morning. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we look at the beauty of creation and we become aware of how we, humanity, have wasted its resources, and marred its beauty. As we look at the world, we see your ample provision, and we see how we have divided it up unjustly, enhancing the divisions between rich and poor. Lord, we have not steward your, did your world well. We have brought upon us all sorts of ecological problems, we come before you on this Harvest Festival in penitence, saying, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
with you let us pray eternal God you crown the year with your goodness and you give us the fruits of the earth in their season grant that we may use them to your glory for the relief of those in need and for our own well-being through Jesus Christ our Lord who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever amen A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks, streams, and deep springs gushing out into the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil, and honey. A land where bread will not be scarce, and you will lack nothing. A land where the rocks are iron, and you can dig copper out of the hills. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws and his decrees that I am giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large, and your silver and gold increase, and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud, and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never known to humble and test you, so that in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant which he swore to your ancestors, as it is today. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the second book to the Corinthians. The point is this. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. This is the word of the Lord. And do not keep 
speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It always strikes me that the Harvest Festival operates on two levels. One is basic, straightforward. It is about, would you believe, the harvest. It is summed up by the lovely hymn, We Plough the Fields and Scatter. This hymn has a joyful simplicity. We thank and praise God for all good gifts around us. The second level is, you might say, metaphorical, about the harvest of Christians for the eternal kingdom of God, summed up by the wonderful hymn we sang as we came in, Come ye thankful people come, where all will be safely gathered in. In the first verse of the hymn, refers to the harvest of the grain, the fruits, and in the last verse is us, free from sorrow, free from sin. The reading from Deuteronomy is, I think you might say, level one. The people are about to reach the promised land after 40 years in the wilderness. It will have brooks and streams for water. There will be wheat and barley, vines and figs, pomegranates, not quite sure about those, but olive oil and honey. Bread will not be scarce, and there will be iron and copper in the hills to mine. So the people will lack nothing. So Moses reminds them not to forget God in their new and comfortable home. Don't get conceited. Don't think all your wealth is your own doing. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. So do not forget the Lord your God. Keep his laws. That is a great lesson for the world and for us who are so comfortable and one we need to remember today. I don't think today's society is a grateful society. We take what we have for granted and we want more. Covetousness is rife. That last of the Ten Commandments, which we tend to forget, is so important. Look at the adverts on the television. How much better? Would your life be if you had this new car or this new computer game or, or, or whatever? You know what I mean. We live in a society based on the economy. St. Paul might say we worship mammon, not God. So we cannot apparently afford to be green quite yet. And we cannot finish what we've more than started with HS2. Money comes first. Plenty we have is not properly, fairly, or justly shared. We create inequality and division. So the first lesson of the Harvest Festival, do not forget God. Be thankful. The kingdom of God is above all a grateful community. The second lesson was from the second letter to the Corinthians. And St. Paul is making an impassioned plea for generosity. God loves a cheerful giver, perhaps the take-home quote from the passage Anthony read. Paul knows that God blesses the generous. He provides abundance so that we may share our riches all the more. This is a profound truth. Bishop Jonathan, the last Bishop of Litchfield, used to say, that if a church complained it was hard up and couldn't make ends meet, he would ask them first how generous their giving was. You can imagine some of the responses. Churches which made generous giving a priority, he found, were generously blessed. The economics 
of the kingdom are not those of the world. So the second lesson of the Harvest Festival is to be generous. I'm not sure that in this letter to the Corinthians, Paul's favorite people, Paul is thinking of material wealth. I think he's moving on level two. God's great gift, which needs sharing, is grace and salvation. God's great gift was himself in Christ Jesus. Paul is exhorting the folk of Corinth to share their riches, not just of the land, but of their faith and of their experience of the kingdom of God. Praise be to our Lord Jesus Christ, you have received God's grace. You have received the Holy Spirit. Tell the others. You can't give your faith away. The resource is infinite, but you can share it. And the more you give, the more you will receive. Again, be generous. And for churches, this means that we must always be looking outward. And then we turn to the gospel and we see just how countercultural Jesus is. First, there is the scary parable of the rich fool, the man who thought only of himself and of himself in terms of his physical comfort. We all do it. We save up wealth and we have insurance policies and pension plans. But God asked the fool, what then? And he had no thought of God. He had no generosity and no gratitude. He sums up the warnings of the first two readings. You fool, this very day, very night, your life will be required of you. But Jesus goes on wonderfully. He tells us not to worry. Do not worry about what you will eat or about your body or about what you will wear. Here is Jesus at his most countercultural. Worry is so destructive, we let it grind us down. Jesus tells us it never does any good. Yet we do worry, and we feel justified in worrying, and we worry about our worrying, and we have sleepless nights, and we make ourselves ill. How can Jesus say, don't worry? Doesn't he know how tough life is? Doesn't he know about the economic crisis? The authorised version tells us to take no thought for the morrow, which is a bad translation. Thought and providing for our physical needs is sensible and necessary, and in the economic situation today, even more necessary. Jesus never told us not to think or plan. He did tell us not to start projects without thinking of the cost, the man who was building a tower, or to fight without thinking about the consequences, the king who was thinking of going to war. Think, plan, but do not worry. You may then say, what does God know of our suffering? And I tell you to look at the person of Jesus Christ. Look to his passion. Look to the cross. Behold and see if there be any sorrow like unto his sorrow. Jesus shares all the stresses of human life. He knows the sufferings, and by selflessly walking the way of the cross, even to death, he shows that life triumphs over death. The light of Christ shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot put it out. So Jesus can say to those who trust him, do not worry, I am with you, I understand, even death, is defeated. Of all these worries, perhaps the most profound on Jesus' list is the worry about clothing. I heard the Bishop of Litchfield talking about this yesterday, saying, do not worry about what you wear, wearing a splendid green and gold chasuble and carrying a wonderful golden mitre with jewels on it. Do not worry about what you wear, but utterly self-conscious, as unselfconscious as Bishop Michael was, he spoke great wisdom. Don't, the worry about clothing is not important because of the fashion industry and all the resources that, that wastes. 
not simply because we care too much about how others see us, but because, perhaps going back to the story of Adam and Eve, we have a fear of being revealed as we are, a fear of nakedness, inadequacy. The first thing those two did when they ate the forbidden fruit was to feel naked and make clothes of fig leaves. And it's a common nightmare, even today, when our worries take hold of us, when we feel inadequate, that we can't find an item of clothing, we can't get somewhere, even that we are, are naked. A dream of inadequacy, of fear of being seen as we are, but by others rather than by God. If we know God, if we know his grace and his salvation, then we know he knows us. He is he from whom no secrets are hidden. We've said that already. We've prayed it. God knows us as we are. We have no need to hide from him. And we have no anxiety because we have our place in him. Our true life is in him. Now, I'm not suggesting for a moment that the nudists have it right. Modesty and practicality do count. But in spiritual terms, when we turn to Christ, when we repent of our ways and give ourselves to him, he sees us as we are, and this is the wonderful thing, he loves us as we are. And there lies the good news, the answer to all anxiety. God loves you as you are, and he clothes you. Whatever clothes are in your wardrobe, he clothes you with his righteousness. You are his eternally. You are safe eternally all shall be well all be safely gathered in free from sorrow free from sin so do not forget god be grateful for all the good things you enjoy and be generous share the good things of life and share your faith and your life in christ and please do not worry god loves you you are his and you are safe. All shall be well. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of what we need with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and he seated at the right hand of the heart. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will lack no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord who giveth the Father, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge the one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, on this Harvest Festival, help us to have grateful hearts. Help us to appreciate the beauty, the magnificence of your creation. Help us to feel its wonder. 
and help us to contemplate with gratitude your glory. Help us, therefore, to appreciate all the more the incarnation of Jesus Christ, that we may know you in terms we can understand. Lord, give us grateful hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church throughout the world, broken and divided as she is, marred by disputes and anxieties. Increase her faith, help her with her unity, and heal her wounds. Make her an instrument of your peace, and give to each of us the faith and generosity to share our faith in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who labor in the fields or on the seas to bring us food. We thank you for our farmland and our farm workers. We thank you for the riches of the sea and the fishermen who harvest it. We thank you for the scientists who help us develop new, more fruitful plants and who ensure that our food is safe for us. Lord, give us grateful hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those for whom the riches of the world do not come their way. We repent of the injustice and division of human society. And we pray that you will turn the hearts of the rulers of the world to ensure a more just distribution of its wonderful riches. Again, Lord, help us to be generous with your provision. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those of this congregation who are at this time sick. We pray for Phil Farron, Betty Bourne, Cess Taylor, June, Amy Wright, Richard, Rob, Andrew, Terry, Patricia, L. Parton, John, Tracy, Margaret, Lynn Connell, Gordon Adams, Gosia Taylor, Pam, Paul, Josie, Barry, Russell, Terry, and Daz Walker. Lord, surround all those for whom we pray with your love. Increase their faith, increase their hope, and help us to be generous with sharing our resources with them that we may be true ministers of your love. Grant them your healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those who have recently died. We remember Peter Booth, Linda Fiddler, Sean Massani, Valerie Thornton, and Father Stanley. May the faithful departed rest in peace and rise in glory. And we pray for all those who mourn their loss, for their families and friends. Again, Lord, we pray, increase their faith and give us the generosity to share our confidence in you with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in the year's mind, we remember Albert Collett, Peter Hill, and Barbara Jones. May light perpetual shine upon them. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ stood among his disciples who were anxious and afraid 
full of worry and care, and said, Peace be with you, my peace I give to you. The peace of the Lord is always with you. Let us offer one another the sign of God. Now that's what I call an offertory. Thank you so much for your generosity. Now I'm not sure of this, but I suspect that all these wonderful fruits of the land will be going into the food banks. Is that true? Absolutely. Which ones do you support, Margaret? The YMCA. The YMCA. I know the YMCA well. They will use them well and ensure that the people who need them most will get them. All things 
comes from you, O Lord, and of your own do we give you. Thanks be to God. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him you have created us in your image and made us stewards of your good creation. Through him you teach us to exult in the birds of the air, the lilies of the field, the precious and life-giving crops of the earth. Through him you free us from the slavery of sin, giving him to die upon the cross and to rise again for our salvation. Through him, you begin your work of new creation as we look for a new heaven and a new earth in which your righteousness dwells. Therefore, with angels and archangels and within the, all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. holy indeed, the source of all holiness, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. So, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate 
the memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Our Lady, the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. John the Evangelist, St. Paul the Apostle, St. Modwin, St. Aidan, St. Chad, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Now, as our Saviour himself has taught us, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be.
Let us pray. Lord of the harvest, with joy we have offered thanksgiving for your love in creation and have shared it in the bread and wine of the kingdom. By your grace, plant within us a reverence for all that you give us and make us generous and wise stewards of the good things we enjoy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Now, I think before the final blessing, Charles has some notices for you. Yeah, um, Neville's on holiday this week, so I'm off to the subs bench for this one. Um, everything you need to know, really, is on the bulletin for the coming week. I just draw your attention to two things, if I might. Um, this coming Saturday is cake and coffee in the Red Lion House and another collection uh, of food for the YMCA. Um, normally, we like to try and get enough so that the cars who take it down to the YMCA are right down on their back axles. So, so, so that's the target for this year, <coughs> or this, this session. <coughs> Sorry. The second thing I would do is just, just commend to you the service for the institution and license of the Father Simon, which will be on Wednesday the 8th of November. Um, all sorts of things are happening behind the scenes for planning for that service. It is slightly longer than normal, but it is a very interesting service to attend, and quite clearly only happens on very rare occasions in this church. So I, I do... I do so sort of invite you to make sure that is in your diary and make every effort to be here if you can. Um, as always, there will be refreshments afterwards. And finally, just to remind you that there are refreshments after this service over in Red Lion House, tea and coffee and hopefully bourbon biscuits. Thank you very much. My sisters, my brothers, my friends, thank you so much your presence here this morning. Thank you for your generosity of the world's produce for the needy of the town, which the YMCA will ensure that they can. It has, I think, been a joyful celebration of God's goodness to us. Um, there lack yet two things, a final blessing and the hymn that we have to sing. Neither have been forgotten. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and free from worry. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. We plow the fields and scatter. Thank you.